So in Bitcoin and other, also other open ledger systems, it's trivial to check if the amounts balance. You can simply run a script where the to make sure that the inputs are equal to the outputs plus the fees. And we can easily verify this by verifying this equation for every transaction. But what if the amounts are hidden and uh, how is it is done? So Monero hides the amount with commitments and a commitment is a multiplication of a mask by the generator G plus the amount by the another generator H. And this is computationally binding. Once I give you the commitment C, the value A cannot change. And this is homomorphic too. So the commitment of A plus the commitment of B is the commitment of A plus B. You can uh, check this by seeing the associative property of the addition of the elliptic curve points. So, but how do we know that the inputs are equal to the outputs plus the fees? So what if we try to make the commitment of the inputs equal to the commitment of the outputs plus the commitment of the fees. What if we try to verify this equation and see if, if this holds? What do we get out of this? So first thing, let's define the commitment of the inputs like this as the sum of all the commitments uh, of the inputs since we can uh, sum the different terms. The same for the outputs and the commitment of the fee is just the fee times the age, which is also a generator. And uh, since there is no relation between G and H, these two generators, we can rewrite these equations in terms of G and H. So the masks terms here, X and Y, they have to um, be equal. So the sum of the, the sum of them has to be equal. And uh, as well, if we sum the terms in H, we can see that the inputs of the the amounts of the inputs, they have to be, they are equal to the amounts of the outputs plus the fee. But there is a big problem here because uh, we are verifying this equation without knowing if the terms A, B, uh, F we know, but we are not knowing that the terms A and B are positive or not. If we want to make sure that this equation balances and then this equation balances, then we have to make sure that the amounts are positive. So if the amounts are positive here, if we, there were a way to make sure that these amounts are positive, then, then verifying if the commitments of the inputs are equal to the commitment of the outputs plus the commitment of the fee, this would give, you, give us the same information as verifying directly if the inputs are equal to the outputs plus the fees. So, how do we verify if this the amounts are positive? So for this, we use the range proofs. So the goal of the range proof is to prove that the amount A is in range zero to two to the power of 64 minus one, which is the, the maximum amount of Monero allowed in a transaction. So um, if we get the binary first thing, we have to get the binary representation of A for all the um, of the different protocols that we have. And then we uh, will apply this range proofs on A. I'm not going into the details how the algorithm works, but before we had the borrowing signatures, uh, which we were just doing a ring signature, basically on every bit of the amount A. And then we changed the protocol to bullet proofs, uh, where we are doing something um, a bit clever and storing less data. So. For the borrowing signatures, if we had uh, two amounts to range proof then, before we would use this much of information in the blockchain or this much of space. And then with the advent of bullet proofs, we made the transactions 80% smaller. And with bullet proofs plus a little bit smaller and a little bit faster. And uh, this happened here because we started having uh, the proof size in logarithmic order um, in regarding to the number of bits of the amount instead of linearly as we had before. So someone find a way to make, go from order n to order of log dn and uh, this had a big impact on the transaction size. 
So what's stored in, in the blockchain now? So since uh, the receiver and the sender knows the amount that they are sending to each other, this is stored in the in the way of a mask and an amount in a transaction. So only the, the sender and the receiver knows what, what how to decrypt this because the sender knows because he knows the transaction uh, private key here and the public key of the sender of the receiver that he's sending to and the receiver he knows the private view key so therefore he can open the mask and the amount but for someone looking from the outside that doesn't know uh, who is not the sender neither the receiver how can he be sure that the amounts are not being inflated and that everything is properly done so the commitment of the inputs are also stored in a transaction as well as the commitment of the outputs and the commitment of the fees so someone looking from the outside can just verify this equation if the commitment of the inputs are equal to the commitment of the outputs plus the commitment of the fee and the sender has also to provide a range proof for each output uh, for each output commitment or each, each output showing that uh, we have positive values in the allowed range so uh, in the transaction we will find these commitments with the range proofs and we can just run this and be sure that no inflation is happening so let's take a look now uh, what a version 2 transaction looks like this is a CLSEG and transaction with uh, 16 ring members the most uh, updated um, up to today uh, in this time of this video <clears throat> so here we have 16 outputs or 16 ring members and one of these ring members is the real signer of this transaction and it and it has key image this key image here and we can be sure that just one and only one signed this transaction and it and this one is one of these public keys here that is on chain by looking at the CLSEG signature here. So this ring signature. So if we make sure that this ring signature is valid, then one and only one uh, output which corresponds to one of these ring members here signing the transaction using this key image here. And this is valid. So we have here one input and two outputs. So this input is creating, creating these two outputs. Uh, and also we have to make sure that this key image never appeared before on the blockchain. So yes, but this is how every, every time this is done. And the receiver knows how to open the amounts because the amounts are encrypted here. And uh, the mask is um, implicitly known. And if we want to verify that inflation is not happening here, we have to take the commitment of the inputs, which is represented by this value here. So this pseudo outs here is the commitment of the inputs. Since we just have one input here, we just have one commitment. And here we have two outputs. So we have two commitments of the outputs, which are represented by this out PK here. And we have the fee, which is represented here, and we don't need a mask, so we can directly multiply this by the generator age. And we, if we make the sum of the fee, which is this number here, times the generator age, plus this output here, plus this output here, this has to be equal to the input commitment here. So if the commitment of the inputs are equal to the commitment of the outputs plus the commitment of the fee, then this is uh, then there is no, no inflation happening if and only if these values are positive. And we can make sure that these values here represented by this encoded amount here are positive by looking at the uh, range proofs provided by the bullet proofs plus here. So if we <clears throat> verify that this, but the bullet proofs here are valid, then we can make sure that these amounts here are positive. And by looking at the commitments here, if they balance, um, if they balance, then this transaction is generate, generating no inflation.